Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. I'm in the third lesson of the course introduction. That's called um, the course part one. It consists, I divided the detailed discussion of the course into three parts. This is the first of those three parts. Lesson three, lessons four and five are the second two of those three parts. And then that's the end of this whole uh, video. And we are just giving some, uh, not great deal of details, but just some brief discussion of the different units in this course. All right, so <clears throat> the following unit the following unit to this is still part of the uh, introduction uh, introduction section, section one, and that's the so-called motivation. And it's a variant of the introduction to the course, uh, just uh, expanding on uh, big data and its current status. Um, with um, overall introductions to what is big data, then just a discussion of why, where data is, for the so-called data deluge, uh, which includes the uh, 16 zettabytes we're going to get by 2016, the 1.8 billion photos uploaded to the internet every day, uh, the 15 petabytes uh, analyzed by the Large Hadron Collider every year, and so on. Then we discuss why you're taking this class. There are lots of jobs in data science. Then we go to trends, which are vary from Moore's law to other trends of the internet, and why they're driving what we're seeing. <clears throat> well, actually, part some of these trends are being driven by the internet. So, like e-commerce, which is taking over from shopping shopping malls, is being driven by this. Uh, is both Driven by this technology and driving the technology, that's wrapped in hand in hand, marching forward. In the next section, next uh, part of this uh, um, <coughs> uh, motivation, which is a separate lesson, we discuss the past, namely what has happened to the mouse and what will happen to the mouse. There is a discussion uh, section on the um, community group called No More Mouse. Query mark where we discuss the implications of, of the internet and e-commerce and big data on mouths. Then we look at the whole computing model and where we know the key point is that industry and as we, as is such a dominant force, uh, we will use clouds to um, do a data analytics and we will point out why it's attractive to data analytics. <coughs> Then we discuss a sort of the research side of, um, of big data, which is the so-called fourth paradigm, data-driven science, and how theory, we're not moving from theory to data-driven science, we're spanning theory to data-driven science, so that uh, everything fits together to make progress. Then we have a look at this whole field we're working on, data science and the process used to analyze data, that's the data information knowledge wisdom pipeline, which DIKW, which underlies all of this. And of course, that's followed by decisions and uh, general community consensuses and so on, things like that. Uh, then we actually go through some of the topics discussed in more detail in this class. We have a few slides on uh, the physics informatics of looking for the Higgs boson with the Large Hadron Collider in CERN Geneva. Then we have a little look at recommender systems and uh, their implications for algorithms. Then we look at web search and information retrieval, another major application discussed in this class. We look at uh, how research uses clouds, actually doesn't use clouds very often. Then we do parallel computing and uh, map produce and how they're matched together nicely. And then we have some comments on sort of the more, on, not, not the topic of the course, but the methodology of this course, namely data science education and its opportunities at universities. And then we have conclusions. Thank you. So that's, this motivation is one unit and lots of lessons. Because what is the longest unit? All right, here we have uh, three units, which is the introduction to, the, to this class. And uh, those units cover the following things. What is X-Informatics? And of course, the rallying cry 
uh, the jobs again, data deluge again, the process of data science, various aspects of the data deluge, the internet, lots of business applications, the data deluge for science and research. Always when I say science, you nearly always should say science and engineering. Um, then we have the implications of the data deluge for the scientific method. That's what was called the fourth paradigm on the previous slide. Then we have an important comment, which is not just true for science, it's the so-called long tail. Disks are so big, they can store information about a lot of things. Whereas, for instance, physical shops can't keep everything. So there's a well-known uh, feature of the internet uh, Shopping revolution that uh, it sells more rare things than the real stores do. Because uh, if you want to do buy a real thing, a uh, rare thing from a store, you have to order it specially. Whereas uh, on the internet, well, it's um, maybe slightly harder to get, but not a lot. And there's a this is the sort of concept of the long tail supported by the internet. And the long tail of science is the so-called big science. Like the several thousand people on the Large Hadron Collider experiment, and there's little science in science done by individuals, where there are so many individuals that together they add up to make major progress. And then we have the very important area of the Internet of Things, uh, that's discussed in sensors in this in this course. Then we look at clouds. Then we look at aspects and features of the data deluge, and the uh, Data science process and data analytics. That is just giving a little more detail than what we had up here. We have our so called side MOOC on Python for big data. Uh, there are endless discussions of. Um, Python online, which are really excellent, it's not possible for uh, or necessary, in fact, for us to compete with it. So we just have a very brief overview. We there are many ways of um, in using Python. We use the system called Canopy, available from Nthought uh, online, and then we discuss uh, with uh, NumPy in three lessons. That's the numerical version of, of, of Python. Then we look at matplotlib, which is what we use for doing our plots in this course. It's a pretty nifty plotting package. And then we have a couple of uh, lessons on SciPy, which is where you'll find the scientific libraries, which are quite well supported in Python. Python does everything except parallelism well. It's very nice, interactive, intuitive. It just runs like a dog because it's not running in parallel. Then we have another so-called side MOOC. Remember that um, I told you that the side MOOCs tended to be off the mainstream of the logical structure. They are defined as units and uh, lessons and things. And we, this is a side MOOC on the backend cloud, which is not necessary for you to use. You can do your work on your own computer, whether it be Python or Java. So we describe what the future systems is. We show you how to create an account on it, which is done through the portal. How you upload uh, your open ID. You upload an SHH key to give you security. Uh, the class will have a project associated with it. You join that project. And I will then give you a rights to run on future systems. And then I will discuss how the Python, use of Python in that environment. And the use of Java in that environment. So that's this is an optional side move because you can do everything on your laptop or your favorite computer. In fact, say so you can use Amazon, Azure, Google Compute, Compute Engine, etc. Uh, then, and this is the final slide of this uh, this particular lesson, which is um, just the first uh, few sections of the class. Then we have four units on um, the X informatics physics use case, which is focused entirely on the discovery of the Higgs particle. Although a lot of the discussion is pretty general. And we use this as an opportunity to discuss general counting experiments. Physics just counts the number of times a certain thing happens. And that's a very general experimental technique. 
and it's described by a certain type of statistics which we discuss. And these are red things here are where there's software, which is, I say, Python in the actual courses, um, actual slides. Although you can do all of this in Java. And then we discuss um, looking for the Higgs particle and introduce the whole concept of counting and the errors in counting. Um, how the informatics of, of this whole process. We have some nice pretty pictures because uh, physics is, has very large instruments, accelerators and, uh, and uh, experiments which analyze the results of, of, of um, of experiments, which is for those accelerators accelerate protons or antiprotons or ions or what have you to high energy, and they crash to either together or they crash with a fixed target. We have a discussion of event counting, including, I say, the software. We discussed some fundamental concepts and statistics, random variables, how you apply them to physics, and the important concept of normal or Gaussian distributions. Then we have an introduction to random numbers uh, with generators and seeds, because some uh, random numbers are actually generated numerically by uh, generating a sequence uh, by obscure um, iterative method, which is guaranteed to produce random answers. Sort of remarkable that works, but it does. We discuss uh, particular distributions, the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution. We discuss the Monte Carlo method, which is a uh, an essential way of um, doing simulations of what you might get. In the case of um, the Large Hadron Collider, it produces as many events by Monte Carlo as it actually observes from the accelerator. The Monte Carlo events allow you to interpret what you observe experimentally, because they allow you to generate events which you then look at in your apparatus and see. And as you know what you generated, you can see what your biases your analysis method or your apparatus produces. We discuss the so-called central limit theorem, which is a critical uh, part of statistics. And the so-called accept reject method, which is a way of uh, generating things with arbitrary distributions. So that's the physics unit, which is uh, also a reasonably sophisticated discussion of practical statistics. And that's the end of uh, this lesson. Thank you very much. The uh, Remember, we have two more lessons discussing the last uh, um, uh, two parts of the course.